So I am so thrilled to be able to present our next presenter. This is Captain Melissa Adams of uh, the Ridgeway Fire Department, it, who, which is inside the Fairfield County Fire Service in South Carolina. She's been doing this for 12 years. And she also works as a curriculum developer at the South Carolina Fire Academy and um, you know, helping to create trainings. She's an instructor with the Fire Academy and she does instruction on her own for volunteer stations, not just in the county, but throughout the um, uh, throughout the state because she knows what she's talking about. She does CPR, ICS, fire dynamics, building construction planning. And she was my captain when I was in Fairfield <laughs> County. And the reason why I am so thrilled that she's able to tell her story and have her conversation with us is because I've never seen her back down from a challenge. There are so many kinds of folks that come into the fire service with different kinds of challenges and she labels everything. She goes over <laughs> step by step. She got a label maker. She labeled everything on, on the whole truck of the whole station. Um, and she makes everyone feel included. And I just want to say thank you so much mm -hmm. for having me while I was down in South Carolina as part of your fire department. So, okay, that's enough gushing. Um, so I know that you don't have it, uh, 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 you aren't used sharing a presentation, but I will just, um, let's have a conversation, Melissa. Cool. Can you hear me? Absolutely. And I just have to tell you the reason I label some things on the truck is because <laughs> um, it, it was common for us to um, get on scene and panic. So I put the instructions on how to get the pumping gear for new firefighters. Um, and once it became muscle memory, then we took the labels off. Um, what's the first thing you pull on the pump panel? I put a number one there. Um, what's the order that you put air into your cylinders? I put it on there. So, um, but I am from Fairfield County in South Carolina. So the smack dab middle of the county is Columbia and we are right above that. And that's our capital. Um, we are 720 square miles. Uh, we are 79% forestry. So if we do get a wildland fire and it usually the big ones are started by lightning um, and they're back in the woods where you can't get to them. Um, they, those end up being pretty big and forestry is our best friend. Um, we're extremely rural. It takes us 45 minutes to get across from one side of the county to the other side of the county. So um, we major in water shuttle. That is one of our big things. We really do not have the hydrants we need. And if we do have them, there's a chance that they're not working. Um, we are made up of mill homes, balloon construction, uh, modular homes, and really old trailers. So um, there is some some brick homes that are being built every you know back in the woods. And a lot of times, when we get called to these houses, we never even knew they existed until we get to their house because they're back in the woods. Um, we have had some houses that have burned where we can only get brush trucks back there, but that's what that they want to be off grid and that is okay. Um, like she said, I'm with a uh, Ridgeway fire department, volunteer fire department, and you can find us on uh, Facebook at Ridgeway SC for South Carolina volunteer fire department. Um, we do that page is for our community. And so when we do training and we do events and things, um, I will simplify it and put it out for our community to understand it. So it's something we have a big relationship with our community. Um, one of the things she said is I do teach. Um, I love teaching CPR in rural county churches. Um, the thing is they don't know that they're gonna get an hour of fire education before they do CPR. So they get their they get their education and it's it's fun. Um, we do meals on wheels through our station. Um, a lot of the places that we go and we pick up elderly um, wrecks, uh, even first responder calls, it still happens with the same people. And so we um, some of the places that I've delivered meals to, we've had um, emergencies and they know us and that's the goal of getting into our community. 
Um, we do, we did purchase a, and Samantha has seen it, a really large blow up smokehouse. And it, when you get it blown up, it's um, something we can put uh, smoke into and take it to festivals and kids can crawl through it. So it's really neat. Um, and it shows them visibility underneath the smoke. Um, so we have a dashboard that we use for data input and that is emergency reporting. Um, that does automatically send us into the infras program. One thing I did have to fight for was getting CRR into our emergency reporting to get it so it showed up on infers. For that, that looked good for us and it shows that we're going out, it shows that we're doing things with community and we're involving the community. Um, so knowing that the, the National Fire Incident Reporting System, you know, is infers, um, it's a voluntary reporting standard and we use it to document our activities. Um, for us in Fairfield, that's going to be fires, uh, emergency medical services, uh, severe weather. Um, we can get we can get hit with some pretty good microbursts and tornadoes. Um, ice storms. We're just our pine trees are not prepared for mm -hmm. ice storms. Uh, natural disasters, and a good one is um, we are two miles from the beaches. So we do get hurricanes and um, rescue calls. Our rescue calls can range from somebody missing. We have an ATV park um, in our county or somebody goes, uh, I said that somebody goes missing. We have had animal rescues before as well and some good old hazmat. Um, so what, what I include with inference and what I love doing is when we get a new person that may not have um, access into our emergency reporting, but what I like to do is sit with them and we do it together. And by doing that, I want to do it over and over and over so they get it and it becomes muscle memory or they understand it. This is why we're putting it this way and not this way. Um, so some of the things that we put into our infers is uh, just plain old how we extinguish fires. Um, did we use forcible entry? Did we use our thermal imager? Um, hazmat. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of hazmat. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> transporting the injured. And, um, so a lot of times that we can do, um, we can do the driving and we definitely put that down for EMS, um, and providing first aid. Um, so we are EMR certified. Um, and like she said, that's stopping the bleeding and that's helping the breathing. And that is it. Um, but a lot of times just being there with somebody is good enough. Um, so we document emergency and non-emergency, and that can be community risk reduction. Um, that can be uh, good intent. That can be anything uh, like that. Um, so our goal is to explain what we do in an objective manner, and that's what we do. So I, one rule we live by, and me and, me and my husband, um, we preach this all the time. If you didn't document it, it didn't happen. And I will document anything from a complex call to if I speak with a firefighter one-on-one, -on -one, I want to document that I did that as well. Even though I document that privately, I mean, still, I document a lot. I, I really do. I probably over document, but that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> so things that we include in our fire reports, um, were the patients transported? Um, because, you know, you have the option of car with injuries or car wreck without injuries. Um, time and date of the fire, location of the fire. Um, we, um, not only do we do address, but we do Eastern, Western and Central region. Um, cause of the fire. Now, when we talk about the cause of the fire, I can go to a car fire and I can say, yep, that started in the engine. I can see the V pattern, but I'm not trained in anything other than where it started. Um, and neither are our firefighters. And I have to specifically tell them, do not do anything more than you're allowed to do. I can't tell you what ignited first. I can't tell you how it spread, but, um, and I hate having to put in undefined, um, but that's what we, we have to do because I don't want to put the wrong thing and ruin their chances at any type of insurance recovery. Um, 
So weather factors, damage um, caused by fires or injuries or fatalities. Now witness statements. Um, I will, we, if we talk with the homeowner, I'm going to put what she said into my data input. Um, and it's, it's not opinionated, it's exactly, well, I was, I was in the bathroom and I came out and saw smoke. That's what I'm gonna put. Um, as simple as I saw it burning from the road. That is just simple witness statements. And we do this um, because the law requires fire departments to maintain fire incident reports. So we, we want to do it correctly. Um, so. Um, I have a question for you, yeah. Melissa. So yes. when you collect all this data from a fire, I think you might know where I'm going with this. You take action by taking that data and making it something that the community can respond to. Correct. So yeah. remember the big door we got in our fire department? I know we yeah. don't have a video of it, but this is, we literally got a door with a door frame and we would bring it to these community risk reduction events. And Melissa, why on earth did we get a door and lug it everywhere around Ridgeway? We, we would put up um, a paper, like for, we have a barbecue festival and we would put the name of the barbecue festival on there and it would be um, sign and pledge to sleep with your door closed at night, close before you doze. So that was one of, that was one of my favorite things. Um, we were, we were very uh, active during COVID um, in installing smoke alarms and we got tons installed. Um, and this was an all volunteer thing. Um, and I, I absolutely loved it. And again, going to the same people in the community. I, I love meeting people and I want them to be able to come to me and say, hey, mom, that's the girl from the fire department. <laughs> yep, I wanna see you. We call it our Ridgeway Walmart, which is the Dollar General. And um, we, we go there and the kids know me. They know me. Yes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna quiz them. You're gonna get a quiz in the Dollar General. But, um, and, and our data showed that people weren't, yes. weren't keeping their doors shut. Right. Like correct, correct. they, it was, it's a cultural thing in the South. You just don't sleep with your door shut. You don't keep your door shut. And we found that after educating folks, what happened, they, um, they, they were willing to try at least correct. because they understood now they heard yes, it from the experts um, and the, and our data showed that people, our damages were less too. Correct. And Unfortunately, Fairfield does not use our, our inference data like we should. We do use call data, um, but I, I want to pick this up. I want to get some uh, community risk grants. Um, I would love to get some grants for that because you know the, the, the equipment that we used, most of our 1% money went for community risk reduction uh, giveaways and, and yeah. Um, so, but um, we, you know, we use it for all of our calls, but stuff like, um, I think the data input that we get out of it would be, um, one of the biggest things is time of day. I mean, oh, yeah. we need some extra career part-time. By the way, we do have 120 volunteers, four full-time and two part-time. Um, so they go to the uh, largest uh, run stations. Um, so we, we do, and we use that um, to see if we need more or where they need to be placed. So that, oh. is, that is us for Fairfield County. Thank you, Melissa. Um, we had a question for you um, from a state program manager Ooh. in Vermont. He asks, Melissa, can you talk a bit about how you use ER for non-emergencies? And I think he means emergency reporting. So um, just very briefly, um, if you want to, answer it live we'd love to hear your answer well um we're very adamant um so even if an alarm goes off at a house or at a business we do not consider that a false alarm because it went off so is it a good intent call um we're very adamant about uh, if the alarm goes off and there's nothing there so we, we would say um Alarm activated, no fire, no smoke. Those are non-emergencies for us, even though we do go code three to get there. Um, 
a lot of times people taking showers cause their alarms to go off. That would be non-emergency. Um, what did we actually, y'all, I kid you not. Somebody called us for a cat in their wall. That would be non-emergency. We did document it, but it was a good intent call. I, I hope that's that's answering. Is that yeah, what Yeah, I think is? so. I think it's, you know, it's definitely situation specific, but you bring it up, a, you emphasize the important thing, and this will be the last thing we talk about before we move on to the next person, but um, everything you go to, you need to write it down, because if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. And, yes. and um, yeah. tell that person if they have any other questions to go to the Ridgeway SC Volunteer Fire Department page and do a message.